Rising majestically from the interior plains of the United States and Canada, the Rocky Mountains stretch across the western North American landscape. These breathtaking mountains and valleys invite adventurers to hike, climb, ski, and camp among thousands of snow-covered peaks and vast glaciers. The Rocky Mountains have countless stories to tell. Here's why they are among the most fascinating and important geographical features in North America. The Rocky Mountains, often called the Rockies, are among the most breathtaking mountain ranges you'll ever see in North America. Stretching for about 3,000 miles, they span from the northern part of western Canada down to New Mexico in the southwestern United States. It's quite the journey, covering so much ground that it's hard to believe they're all part of the same mountain system. When people talk about the northern end of the Rockies, they might be referring to different spots. Some say it's in North British Columbia, in the Terminal Range, south of the Lyard River. Others argue it's where the Brooks Range and British Mountains meet, near the Beaufort Sea, crossing the Alaska-Yukon border. No matter which point you pick, it's way up north and far from the hustle and bustle of city life. As you head south, the Rockies eventually taper off near Albuquerque, New Mexico. This southern tip is close to the Rio Grande Rift and north of the Sandia Manzano mountain range. It's amazing how these mountains create a natural border and a visual treat, running like a spine down the continent. The Rockies are also geographically unique. They are the easternmost part of the huge North American Cordillera, which stretches from the Lyard River in British Columbia down to the headwaters of the Picos River in New Mexico. This massive range can be anywhere from 70 to 300 miles wide, so the Rockies dominate the landscape. Moving forward, they have a rich history dating back thousands of years with various Paleo-Indian and Native American tribes calling these rugged peaks home. Evidence suggests the Paleo-Indians may have roamed the region over 5,000 years ago, leaving behind rock walls used for trapping game like mammoths, a testament to their resourcefulness and ingenuity. European exploration of the Rockies kicked off in the 1500s with the arrival of Spanish explorer Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, who forever changed Native American cultures through the introduction of horses, tools, and, unfortunately, diseases. Fast forward to the 1700s and 1800s, and the focus shifted to fur trapping and trading, with French fur traders dubbing the area the Rockies after encountering a Native American tribe. In 1793, Sir Alexander Mackenzie made history as the first European to cross the Rockies, paving the way for further exploration. Then, from 1804 to 1806, the legendary Lewis and Clark expedition embarked on the first scientific exploration of these towering mountains. Settlement of the Rockies began in earnest in the mid-1800s, marked by the arrival of Mormons near the Great Salt Lake in 1847, and several gold rushes that swept through Colorado, Idaho, Montana, and British Columbia from 1859 to 1864. Today, the Rockies remain largely untouched, but far from empty. One of the coolest things about the Rockies is that they hold some of the highest peaks in Central North America. Mount Elbert in Colorado takes the crown at 14,440 feet above sea level. Over in the Canadian Rockies, Mount Robson is the giant, standing tall at nearly 13,000 feet. These peaks are true giants, offering breathtaking views and a serious challenge for mountain climbers. The eastern edge of the Rockies is where things get dramatic. This side rises sharply above the interior plains of central North America. It includes some stunning ranges, like the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in New Mexico and Colorado, the Front Range in Colorado, and the Wind River Range and Bighorn Mountains in Wyoming. The central part of the Rockies has some incredible spots to explore. The LaSalle Range on the Utah-Colorado border is perfect for hiking with stunning views. In southeastern Utah, you'll find the Abajo Mountains and Henry Mountains, both known for their unique and rugged beauty. The Yunta Range stretches across Utah and Wyoming, featuring some of the tallest peaks in the Rockies. On the western side of the Rockies, you've got the Wasatch Range near Salt Lake City, which is a big hit for skiing and outdoor fun. The San Juan Mountains, spread across New Mexico and Colorado, are rich with history and scenic views. 
the Bitterroots along the Idaho-Montana border and the Sawtooths in central Idaho offer rugged, untouched landscapes perfect for adventurers. These ranges are separated from the ones further west by the Great Basin and the Columbia River Plateau. And let me tell you, life in the Rockies could be smoother with people. On average, you've got about four people per square mile, so it's pretty spread out. Big cities? Not so much. You'll find only a handful with over 50,000 people. But there was a time when the Rocky Mountain states saw a population explosion. From 1950 to 1990, things were booming. Montana saw a 35% increase, while Utah and Colorado, they shot up by 150%. Some mountain towns and communities practically doubled in size over just 40 years. Take Jackson, Wyoming, for example. Back in 72, it had 1,244 residents. Fast forward to 2012, and that number increased to 4,472. That's more than double the number of people calling it home. Let's take a closer look at the geology behind the Rocky Mountains. The oldest rocks in the Rockies are Precambrium metamorphic rocks, which form the very backbone of the North American continent. These ancient stones date back over a billion years, offering a glimpse into the early history of our planet. Additionally, you'll find Precambrium sedimentary argillite, which has been resting here for about 1.7 billion years. Fast forward to around 300 million years ago, and the landscape began to transform dramatically. Mountain building events near present-day Colorado led to the formation of what is known as the Ancestral Rocky Mountains. These early mountains were primarily composed of ancient Precambrian metamorphic rocks, which were thrust upward through layers of limestone. However, like all things in nature, they didn't last forever. Over millions of years, erosion gradually wore them down, leaving behind layers of sedimentary rock. Around 350 million years ago, massive pieces of the Earth's crust, known as terrains, began colliding with the western edge of North America. This monumental event is called the Antler Orogeny. Imagine the slow but relentless force shaping the land over millions of years. However, it wasn't until about 80 million years ago that these powerful geographical forces started to significantly shape the Rockies, creating the stunning landscapes we admire today. The Laramide orogeny, occurring 80 to 55 million years ago, was the era when the Rocky Mountains began to take shape. A similar process unfolded in Canada, where tectonic plates collided, pushing against each other. The ancient rocks played a crucial role in stabilizing these movements, while the Canadian shield remained steadfast at the center of these dynamic geological events. Down south, things got even more interesting. An unusual subduction might be the reason behind the Rockies' growth in the United States. The Farallon Plate slid beneath the North American Plate at a shallow angle. This unique setup moved the melting and mountain-building action farther inland than usual, shifting the spotlight to a different stage. Scientists think this shallow angle increased friction and other interactions with the thick continental mass above it leading to serious thrusts that stacked crust sheets on top of each other, building up the broad, high Rocky Mountain range we know today. If you want to learn about another fascinating corner of our planet, then why not check out the fascinating Geography of Patagonia video.